Welcome to Laquita's Toolbox, where we deliver relevant content in the form of tools that empower entrepreneurs to elevate personally and professionally. Good is only good until greater is envisioned. You know there's another level in you. Here we discuss the tools to get you there. Lean in as Laquita and her guests present you with strategies and insight for unlocking your full potential to realize your boldest dream. Welcome back to another amazing episode of Laquita's Toolbox. I am your host, Laquita Monley. And guys, I am definitely excited today about today's episode. You guys know I always say I'm excited because I'm an excitable individual. This is true. But today I truly am. I've been wanting to do this episode for the last several months. And so I'm just happy to have our guest, the evangelist Lisa Marie Morton in the audience in the house with us today. I said the audience, y'all. No, she not in the audience. She in the house. She is going to be our subject matter expert today. But before we get started and jump off into this conversation with Evangelist Lisa Marie, let me give a shout out to our sponsors at Covenant Press. You guys know that Covenant Press has been a faithful sponsor of Laquita's Toolbox for quite some time. And we're just happy uh, that for their partnership. Covenant Press is a faith-based Christian apparel and accessory shop online where we can shop for clothing and accessories that allow us to wear the message of the love of Jesus Christ. Go out to www.covenant-press.com. Again, that's www.covenant-press.com. Shop until you drop, ladies and gentlemen, but do not click off of those pop-ups too fast or you will miss out on some amazing discount codes that you can apply at the checkout to receive savings on your purchase with Covenant Press. Again, visit them at www.covenant-press.com. Evangelist Lisa Marie, woman of God, how are you? And welcome to the toolbox. I am doing phenomenal. Thank you so much for having me. I am just so happy to be with you. You know, you're my sister. (laughs) I just love vibing with you, laughing with you, talking with you. So I am honored to be here and have this conversation with you today. Thank you so much. It is it is definitely a privilege for me. You all for you all that may not know the my Laquita's Toolbox followers um, that have been a part of the community for quite some time. You guys are aware that uh, myself and my husband and Lisa Marie and her husband were guests on an amazing show. Uh, And we did that show what back in October of last year. And I think it premiered this year. Uh, right. Becoming a Millionaire Power Couple Season 2. So if you're new to the podcast and you have not checked out Becoming a Millionaire Power Couple Season 2, you need to make sure that you check that out. It is found on Amazon Fire TV, Roku TV. You can download Zondra TV Network app to your smart device, uh, smart TV or device, and check out those episodes. I guarantee you it will definitely bless your life. And we had just a great time there. And I wanted to make sure that I had Evangelist Lisa Marie on the podcast to share a bit with us about who she is and what she does. Yes. Thank you again for having me. My husband and myself, we have a business that we've honestly been in since we were kids. (laughs) We went into business together from the early age of like 18. And the easiest thing that we could have got into was timeshare. So we went ahead and we got our real estate license. So some timeshare. And then we uh, just pivoted over to the marketing aspect of that. And since then, that's what we've been doing is just marketing the timeshare. And uh, we have several locations in Orlando, Florida. And what we do is we just help tourists get discounted tickets because we know these theme parks over here could be expensive. So we help them with getting discounted tickets to the theme parks. We help them with discounted resort stays. And in doing so, we send them to our partner resorts like Westgate resorts like that to just do a a timeshare presentation. And um, yeah, we've been doing that for quite a few years. We love it. Personally, myself, my business, 
I enjoy doing. Um, I'm trying to juggle everything, but my business is uh, consulting. I consult people uh, with any type of project they have, whether it be that they're starting a new business or they're writing a book or they are uh, doing a conference. I go ahead and I offer them strategies how to do that. And then I um, pretty much am project leader on their projects, just um, running everything for them with that. Also, I do life coaching. I do uh, wife coaching. I do um, <laughs> branding, which is one of my favorites, actually. I love to help people with branding and just helping them get their personal brand. Once you see a woman walk into who God has created her to be, yes, it's amazing, amazing, amazing to see her flourish in, in that brand that God has given her. Awesome. See, you guys see why I wanted to have her on multifaceted, multi-talented. We have to get some tools out of her today, Toolbox audience. You guys, you know the drill. Make sure that you have something to write with and to write on because each episode of Laquita's Toolbox is always jam-packed with powerful tools that help you grow personally and professionally. And if you're saying, Laquita, I'm driving my car. She already saying a lot of stuff. I want to write it down. That's all right. It's a podcast. So hit the hashtag replay when you get settled and play this back with your pen and your pad and get ready to take some notes because we're about to pick her brain and find out how she manages all of these different hats. And we're going to start off by letting me tell you, I need to send my son to you. He was just on my phone the other day crying. He's got two kids and they want to take the kids to Disney. And mm -hmm. he calls, he FaceTimes me with this serious look. He's like, mom, I know you got a way to get some deals on this ticket because I know y'all didn't pay that much to go to Disney. And my husband and I laughed and because we have five kids. Yeah. And he, we laughed and I was like, um, no, Disney don't do deals like that. They're Disney. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Please send him my way. I can definitely <laughs> help him out. And we would love to. As a matter of fact, we're going to help him out so good that he's going to be returning every year once he buys one of those timeshares. Once stuff. he buys. See, <laughs> no, I'm going to send him your way because I need somewhere to go without them. <laughs> But, I mean, you said that you guys have been in business since 18 right. in real estate. Yeah. That's that's not a small achievement to say, okay, I barely know who I am. I'm 18, but I know that I'm going to jump headfirst into entrepreneurship, into an industry where literally you can't eat if you don't. If you're not grinding, you're not eating, literally. Talk to me about that. Like, where was your headspace at when you guys said, okay, we are going to do this? Because a lot of entrepreneurs, fear is a factor. Right. And you were 18, you were babies. Yeah. How did that, you know, talk to me, tell me, how did that work out? Well, I would say what, what, what even got us to that point of making that step at 18 years old was seeing someone that we could admire first off right? Whenever you want to go into an industry or you're going into a business, my advice is to always find someone that is already doing it and doing it well, right? And mm. then kind of learn from them, you know, kind of learn, have them mentor you, even if you don't know them, but just be able to have someone that you can watch and just kind of gather what you can glean from yes. that. Yes. And if that's something that you still enjoy after you're gleaning, then I would say, yeah, definitely take that step into that industry. And um, yeah, I would say anything that you are going to pour your time into and just give it your all, it'll definitely succeed. I mean, when we're children of God, what does he say? He blesses the work of our hands. Yes, he does. We just always got to make sure that we're doing the right work. That's, that's it. You asked a phenomenal question, and it's because of the age 18. How, how often do we hear our kids saying, I don't know what I want to do yet. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it, I don't, I don't even know if I want to go to college. I don't know what I want to do yet. My advice at that age is do something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do, do something. something. <laughs> because you'll know what you are by first knowing what you're not. <laughs> Come on, that's real good. That's real so good. The more that you do, the more kind of jobs that you're doing, you'll realize, okay, all right, 
I, I'm not, uh-uh, I can't do this. No, I can't wrap subs at Subway. There's just something wrong. I can't get these. So I know I'm not going to be running a restaurant anytime soon. Come on now. You made, me, you made me have a flash back then. <laughs> there was a time in my life where I worked in a chicken processing plant. I think what? I lasted 30 days. Yes, it was a dark <laughs> time. <laughs> Can you imagine my husband, we were young. I was probably 20, 20, yeah. 21. And he was deployed to Korea for a year. So I went to Mississippi, which is where I'm from to yeah. live for a year. Jobs were limited. Mm-hmm. So the job called me. It had great pay. It was at night. Evangelist, it was the easiest job in the factory. <laughs> All I had to do was stand on this elevated platform and look off into chickens whole chickens to make sure all of the insides had been taken out and if it hadn't just put my hand in it and take the insides out and throw them on the floor (laughs) it was mind numbing and one day I was standing on that platform and the chickens are coming on like this rotating clothesline and all I could see was just chicken (laughs) I had no idea what I wanted to do but I knew what I did I did not want to do that not another day (laughs) You see, if you got anything from this podcast today, <laughs> you'll I'm know sorry. what you want to do by what you don't want what to you do. What you don't want to do. So I, I love it, you know, with because most kids are. I was on the phone with my youngest. He's about to, he's in his sophomore year of college. Yeah. And we were talking about summer and he was in that. He just said, and I don't even know if I'm going to, I'm going to change my major it will be number three. Mm. You know, everything in me was like, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Because he's figuring out what he does not not want to. Yes, he has discovered three things that he does not want to do. (laughs) And that's how he got it presented to you. He got like, mom, mom, listen. (laughs) I found out what I don't want to do. Okay. I'm getting closer to what I want to do. Mom. What I want to do, right? <laughs> but it's, you know, it's good. I, I could not agree with you more. Do something. At age 18, you didn't quite know what you wanted to do. But as you were exploring, you figured out, I didn't want to do A, B, C, or D. And right. then you discover real estate and timeshares. And it was exciting. And right. you found someone that could mentor you that, you guys were gleaning great information from and learning from at 18. That's a phenomenal feat. I mean, even still, that's something phenomenal to be done. So listen, guys, those that are listening, it does not matter your age. When you know in your heart that I want to do something and I'm determined to work out what my future is going to be, the sky's the limit. You just have to have the determination. And evangelist says something very key connect with the right people that you can glean from. And at 18, I think that's the most phenomenal thing there that at, because I don't know, you were real different at 18. I didn't want to be told a whole lot of things. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. (laughs) I didn't want to be told a whole lot of things that we know at all when we're 18. Yes. (laughs) And any teen. Whether it be 17, 16, 18, 19, you just think you know what. Yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah, at that age, you don't necessarily want to be told what to do. So that's why I always recommend that at that age, just find a mentor. Mm-hmm. And the good thing about where God led us with Timeshare was that we got to be around people of different levels, whether it be people just coming into the industry and people that were working the industry for 25, 35 years. So you're able to, you know, kind of, have people that you can relate to, meaning we're both growing in this together. And then also people that you can look up to and admire and be like, how did they make it in this industry so long? Yeah, Because they're, you know, in any industry, you'll hear rumors of how you can't make it or Mm. all the negative things. So you definitely, like you said, have to have a really good support system, a really good, you know, just workspace where, you know, this is what I want to do. This is what I've invested in right now. So while I'm here, let me try to glean what I could glean and learn what I can learn and see if this is my spot where God wants me to be. 
Yes, I love that. I love that. Listen, y'all, Evangelist is dropping some powerful gems. I hope you guys are taking notes. I hope you're taking notes. And if you are not subscribed to the podcast, take a moment while you're on your favorite podcast listing platform, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and leave us a rating. I know it's going to be five star because this episode is five star. Leave us a comment as well to let me know what you think about this episode or any previous episodes that you've heard. If you're new, tell me about this episode and give me an expectation of some things that you'd like to hear from our guest in the future. Some other topics like share, subscribe, leave a comment. So, you know, I got, I, I got, I have the inside track a little bit because I heard a piece of your story. I heard a little bit of your story. <laughs> <laughs> and so I know that while you guys were building business, you were also building family. And we have a lot, that's a common question that I get. Um, how do we make that work? How do you make that work no matter what age you were at? But you were a young entrepreneur, young wife, young mom. How did you guys make that work with being able to find out what's the balance, you know, the the ups, the downs? How did you make that work with building business while building family? That's a great question. Um, balance is always what we're searching for, you know, and what even led us to the timeshare industry was us getting pregnant so young. I got pregnant at 16 years old and we were determined to not be a statistic. We were determined to make it. So in our minds at that age, it's like to make it, all we need is money. If we could provide for our family, if we could provide for our baby, then we got it. You know, if, if everybody on the outside can see that, you know, we have this business or we have money, okay, then we made it. So that's what we strive to get. And so, yeah, we went into timeshare. We were successful in that. And it looked like everything was good when we were just earning this money, right? We started to Mm -hmm. build our life. We started to buy the house, buy the vehicles, take the vacations. What we didn't realize is that that was still always our priority. Mm -hmm. We never made that change where it was like, hold on. We got to pay attention to each other. We got to pay attention to our child. You know, we're building this family, but what is it that we're teaching them? Are we just teaching them that all you need is business and success? And as long as you have that, you got everything. And in the midst of just growing a business, growing our lives, we, like I said, we lost each other Mm. and we ended up getting divorced. I would say probably about 14 years in. We just got a divorce. My husband sat me down one day. He was like, Lisa, I want a divorce. But let me tell you, Laquita, I was like, what do you mean you want to divorce me? I should be divorcing you with everything you've been doing. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, I had to I had to understand in that moment. And and it was difficult to have that coming to self moment of God, where did everything go wrong? Because prior to my husband sitting me down, I saw all the cracks, but I just figured we've gone so long like this. Maybe we can just keep going. And I tried at that moment to try to do what I could. So I started going to church. Mm. (laughs) I was like, God, can you save my marriage? Can you save Mm -hmm. my family? Because we're winning in one area, which Mm -hmm. is business and success, but we're losing on the home front of family Mm. intimacy with my husband and really having a strong foundation at home. So as I got to praying, God was like, no, I'm not going to repair this situation. You're going to be getting divorced. And I was like, no, God, I didn't hear you. Right. So I'm going to come to church again next Sunday. We're going to do this all over again. Hopefully you give me a different answer. (laughs) I was like, no, you're getting divorced. Yeah. And I would be like, but God, please work on my husband. Because he's the problem. Mm. He's cheating. He's doing this. He's doing that. Work on him. And God was like, no, I'm going to be working on you. And again, I was like, this ain't working. (laughs) (laughs) This prayer thing is not working. Because how are you talking to me about me (laughs) when I'm talking to you about the problem, God? Yes. Yes. (laughs) And so when my husband sat me down and asked me for a divorce, even though it was a shock, in my mind, I was still like, okay, God, you prepared me for this. 
but what do I do? Because I've been with this man since I was 14 years old. And <clears throat> at this point, I don't know even what's going to become of myself and my children. Yes, we built a business. That was great. But what comes from here when you got a broken family? Mm -hmm. And throughout that time, God was just working on my identity. Mm. I didn't realize that I had lost myself. Come my on, title sis. was just wife and mom. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize who God created me to be and that that was even something that I needed to understand yes. or comprehend. So during that time, when God said that he was going to work on me, he didn't lie. Mm. He definitely worked on me. He had to just uproot mindsets that were poisonous to me and poisonous to the way that I was, you know, even mothering our children or being a wife. And as God continued to work on me, then he started to reveal to me all the areas that were out of order, how they got out of order, how long they were out of order. And asked me, do I want to partner with him to get it in order? Mm. I'm like, okay, God, I mean, that sounds good, but what's the good part? of partnering with you to get this back in order because I'm divorced now. So I was mm. like, you know what, God, I got an idea. Let me make a list of my new husband <laughs> and all the things I want him to be like, is if I'm going to get in order, then you're going to be sending me a new one. Right. And so as I'm reading off this list, God was like, everything on that list is your husband. And I'm wow. going to be sending him right back to you and restoring that marriage. Mm. I was like, no, God, no, 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 no. Don't send me home. <laughs> no, 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 God. <laughs> See, if you guys haven't picked up by now, I'm one that I just, I just argue with God. And I'm like, God, I don't know about this. <laughs> like, I don't know about that, Lord. It's like, uh, so, uh -uh. So I'm like, listen, Lisa, just trust me. I'm going to send him back, restore your marriage. And um, God said, I need your faith to work. So mm. that extra closet you have in your room, I need you to clear that out because your husband is going to be coming back. Wow. And I was like, God, but we signed the divorce papers. He's already living with another woman. They're talking about getting married, having children. How is this going to work? Can you believe Laquita? Less than three weeks, that man was back. Wow. Listen. Less than three weeks, he was back home. Even after my son called him. I was like, mom is losing her mind because she's clearing out a closet saying you're coming back. <laughs> his dad responded to him. She is losing her mind because I'm not coming back. <laughs> my dad told me, Lisa, don't worry about it. That woman that he's with, I'm sending to, to the complete opposite end of this country. You'll never hear about her again. Wow. She won't bother you. Don't worry about it. I am restoring your marriage. And I just held on to that faith and God did restore it. But when God restored it and we got remarried and everything was great, it did. It took work. It took us going mm -hmm. to counseling. Yes. It took us having that new mindset that I was telling you about. But now we understood success wasn't all we needed. The first success that we needed was our home to be successful. So we actually allowed the business to downscale while we paid attention to our family and just really worked on our marriage and really worked on, um, you know, what is the, how is it that we want our children raised? Mm -hmm. We actually took our children out of school and just homeschooled them and been homeschooling them since yes, our oldest yes. graduated high school being homeschooled. And yes. um, we realized just how much better it was to be a full-time family that really became our everything. Yes. So, in saying all of this, when I'm talking about balance and what does it look like to balance business and family, you always have to make sure that your family is number one priority. Come on now. Your spouse is number one priority. And of course, God is above all, right? Without God, we're lost. Without oh, God, yeah. like we were talking about earlier, I don't know what I'm going to do in the day until I seek God in the morning. Yes. And I'm like, God, I need you today. Yes. I need to direct my footsteps. I know I have plans. God, you see my phone right here. I got all these <laughs> schedules for the day. But God, you know exactly where I need to be, when I need to be. And even if you need to interrupt my day, I trust you to do that. So yeah. I have learned that the balance comes with humility. Mm, come and on, sis. Say that. To just lay ourselves down 
at the feet of God and be like, God, you show me how you're going to use me today. Mm. Whether you're going to use me to minister to my husband, minister to my children, whether you're going to use me in business, how are you going to use me today? The only one that can balance us is God. God will lead us to like, for instance, if I'm paying too much attention at work and God is like, but excuse me, your husband's been calling you. Yeah. Your kids yeah. need you. Then it's that voice that I know, okay, God, let me go ahead. God is the one that teaches us to balance. So my advice is always be ready to lay your life down every single day for God. And he's definitely going to help you balance family and balance business. Listen, y'all, I know y'all was taking notes. You might not have been able to write fast enough to keep up with everything, but that's the beautiful thing about a podcast. You can hit rewind, go back. And take copious notes. Take your time. This is one of those podcasts that you have to have on replay and play that thing two or three or four times for everything to just begin to resonate in your spirit. Because she pulled out some powerful truths right there. I mean, it gets it gets no simpler than that. The the magic she gave you the magic formula to balance. What balance looks like in the Monley home or in the Morton home might not be what balance looks like in your home. But guarantee when we stop and we allow God the space to speak to us and allow him to direct our very footsteps, he will show us what balance looks like and needs to be in our home, in our business, in our various relationships and partnerships that, we, that we've that we made. He will give us the balance, but it comes with first prioritizing him And the first ministry that he gave us, which is our family, when we put those things in order, he definitely will do the rest. And listen, sis, that was some pieces to your story there that I didn't quite get all the details from the last things because I was scoping you out. You know, I was social media stalking you because it's what I do. But (laughs) hey, you and me both. (laughs) I mean, I was just I'm smiling so big because, you know, some so many pieces of your story remind me of my story. Um, And even when you were talking about what success looked like, my husband and I met in high school as well. I was 15 and he was 17 and we too became teenage parents. And we thought that success was about the money, the house, the cars. And then you get the money, the house and the cars, but the inside, the outside is beautiful, but the inside is a mess. And we had to redefine what success looked like and what it needed to be for us. And we quit. Well, I won't say quickly because I'm a little stubborn. He a little stubborn. (laughs) We was having conversations or non-conversations with God (laughs) ourselves, you know, but allowing him to define what success means for the monolays and then operating off of his blueprint is how we find the balance and what success truly means. And I'm here to tell you guys, when you do that, you'll find that the minuscule piece of your success is the money. Mm -hmm. It it is the minuscule piece. Yes. I'm not saying money, not important. You need the money because you got bills. You're going to need the money. I'm not saying don't make the money. Don't make it your priority. That's right. Don't make it your priority, man. I'm the way you unpack that right there, we could have had three or four or five episodes. We're going to have to come back and do hey. some live girl <laughs> talk. We have to take this to a live stream and do some girl talk. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah, see, we I'll can bless some women. <laughs> <laughs> some men and women of God. Listen, we've talked about balance, you guys. We've talked about the key ingredients to building a successful marriage and a successful business simultaneously. But I don't want to let evangelists go before we talk about what role identity plays in all of these things, because that is, you guys know that identity is something that I love to talk about. And we're going to incorporate that in today's conversation as well. In all of that, what role did understanding who God is and who you are in him, your identity, what role did that play for you guys in building the success that you have today? 
That's so good. Um, I would say identity, <clears throat> as we mentioned, you know, just going in the business as an 18-year-old, you you kind of just want to mimic everything and everybody, right? That's kind of why we lose our way and we start going after what we think success Come on is, now. is because Come on. we are mimicking what we see. Yes. Now, when we, you know, I, I hate to say it like this, but when we fall on our face or we hit rock bottom and we realize, hold on, what we thought it was, it isn't, now what, right? We, we kind of get to that point within ourselves or we're like, I've tried everything, every way, but yet I'm still unfulfilled. I'm still unhappy and I have no peace at night. I can't sleep. I don't know whether I'm going or coming. I don't know what I want to do. And I feel like every few years I'm reverting back to this. of mm. Who am I? What am I supposed to do? I tried that business. It didn't work. Why does everything I keep trying not work? Or why am I a starter, but not a finisher? Mm. Come on. Now. I would say the answer to all those things is because you don't know who you are. Come on, sis. When we don't know who we are, we're going to start something and not finish it because it just doesn't resonate with our spirit. Come on now. It it's not in alignment. Purpose. It's not yes. in alignment. Yes. So it's like God will let you play with those things, but he's not going to prosper those things because it's just not in your purpose. It's not in your destiny. The way that we find who we are is first finding who we are in God. Now, remember in my story, I told you that before God could restore my marriage, before God could do anything about my complaints on my husband, he had to address me. He said, at least I'm going to be working on you. So during that time, what I learned was I had to address what's in my heart. What insecurities are in my heart? Because I didn't realize everything that I was feeling or dealing with stemmed from insecurities of I don't know who I am. Everybody else seems to know who they are. They got a good life. But what about me? I, I have everything that looks like I would have a good life. But yet, like I said, I'm unfulfilled. Yes. So really, who am I? Yes. And it wasn't until that I started just seeking God more and more and more until God was able to reveal to me, listen, in order for you to know who you are, first, we got to address the contents of your heart. Come Who are you harboring unforgiveness towards? Mm. Why haven't you released them yet from your heart? Let's go ahead and let's work on that. Because oftentimes the unforgiveness that we're harboring is maybe things or we're harboring people that have said things about us. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. That goes to question our identity. Mm. Word curses, those have to be broken off of they us. They have to be. Yes. Come on. That's be real good. Off of us. Before we can come into agreement with what God says, we have to come out of agreement with what the enemy says about us and out of agreement with what those people that have hurt us or hated on us said about us. Come on so now. little by little, I had to go in and really just go into those deep places that weren't easy and mm. be like, you know what, God? That person did hurt me and they did say this about me. And you know what? The molestation hurt me. And you know what? This did hurt me. Yeah. And that chip on my shoulder started coming off. Yeah. Yeah. And as that came off and all of the victimization and all of the why me, why me started coming off. Then God said, now I'm going to let you know who you are. Ah, uh, come on now. First of yes. all, who you are is Christ-like. Yes. He says Christ could do, you could do. Yes, it's come not on. greater. So I said, God, you know, you formed this earth through wisdom. You formed this earth through the Holy Spirit. Yes. That lives in me. Yes. If you can make the waters go only this far. Come on now. What I speak through my mouth, I can mm. use. So when I started to come into agreement with what my power is and understanding that how I think determines how I feel, mm -hmm. then now I know, okay, if I start to think good about myself, mm -hmm. then I'll start to feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. So I started to talk words of encouragement to myself of Lisa, you are this. Yes. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. made. Come on now. Lisa, That's you right. are smart. Lisa, yes. if you could start a business at this age, you are capable of doing so much more. Yes. You are capable of not giving in to fear and just continuing to speak life to myself. Yes. The Holy Spirit, of course. And as I continue to just speak that life to myself, I start to feel myself come alive. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Lazarus coming out of the tomb 
and God was wrapping or unwrapping those grave clothes. You know, I, I'm so glad like, you said that because, you know, when Lazarus came forth from the tomb, the people who put the grave clothes on him had to remove the grave clothes from him. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> listen, come on, woman of God. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so listen, y'all got to be taking notes. This woman of God is dropping gems. So many great tools. So many, yeah, we got to come back because I'm about to, I, you, I'm about to shout up in this booth. Like, <laughs> I'm about to shout up in this booth. I mean, yes. so appropriate. The things that the world puts on you, situations, circumstances, individuals, when we allow the Lord to walk us through that deliverance, when we allow him to heal us, when we allow him to reveal to us who he created us to be, it's not that we take that stuff off. We allow him to remove it. And in certain situations, even according to Psalms 23, he'll put those enemies, he'll present them at the table. Sometimes we're just impatient and not waiting long enough for the table. That's right. Wait for the table. Go through the process. What the woman of God is saying, do the work and clean that you heart. need to do. Allow the Lord to do in your heart. And all of those things that you desire, he's going to give them to you because he's going to bring you in alignment with his perfect will for your life. Right. That that knowing who you are in Christ is so important. It yeah. is so important. Like without understanding who I am in Christ, I know I wouldn't be where I am today. And and that's not to boast or to brag. I mean, I'm just me. Right. But but each of us have gone through challenges and different things in our life. We all have a story. Mm -hmm. And we have been a big part of being the author of our story. But there's some parts of our story that took place that were out of our control and against our will. Right. But we're greater than that. We've overcome that because we're in the right now and those things happened in the past. What evangelist has been saying to us in this time is when we take the time to allow the Lord to show us who we are, then he'll show us how powerful we are. That's right. <clears throat> and like I said, it reverts back to the whole thing of before we know who we are, we have to know who we're not. Yes. As you were mentioning all those things that we went through whether it be molestation, whether it be a bad marriage, an abusive marriage. Sometimes we take that on as our identity. Mm -hmm. When I used to ask my husband, why do you cheat? He used to tell me it's just the way I am. It's my personality. And I, for a while, I used to think, okay, maybe it is. So if it's a personality, does that mean that he can't change? Mm. Because when they're telling you this is how I am, is my, what they're trying to say is I can't change. I can't change. But exactly. after seeking God and understanding no, that's not a personality. Mm -hmm. That's just the way he thinks. So that's how yes. he reacts. Yes. How we think is how we're going to react. But when Come on we now. sit at the foot of God and say, yeah. God, there is this thing about me, God, that I keep repeating, but I don't like. That's yes. when we're opening up our hearts to deliverance. Yes. Come on. That's now. when we're ready to seek God for our true identity. So what I'm trying to say is before you know who you are, be delivered from who you're not. You're not. Come on. Be you better preach. All Come the on. things that have happened to you, because that is not your identity. Yes. It is not. Even some of the things that we came up in our upbringing, mm -hmm. those, are, those could be generational curses, strongholds that have to be broken off of you before you could walk into your purpose. Come Just on. Just like when we see the Israelites, they had to be delivered. Yes. Before God was able to reveal to them who they are. Come on now. He revealed it to them moment by moment saying, listen, I don't even want you to eat this because my people don't eat this. Yes. I don't want you, what you saw over there. Everything that you learned from Egypt. That's not you. That's not you. So when mm. God is going to take you into purpose, he's going to first deliver you. From Come who on. you're not. Come on. He's say, Listen, you're not the Egyptians. You may have been raised there, but that's not you. Come on now. Listen, I don't want you to adapt everything that they did. This is you. So your purpose can only come from God and it comes little by little. By yes. little. I'm still learning me. Okay? Come on. It's a process. <laughs> I, I can, 
There are I consistently have this caution like, shirt on to say I'm a work in progress, y'all. Right. There are some <laughs> things that still God is like, I need you to do this. And I'm like, huh, I can't do that. God, and he's like, yes, you can. Yes. Don't yes. worry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guide you along the path. So the thing that God is going to call you to is going to scare you. Yes. I can tell you that right now. Your identity in God is going to scare you. You know why? Because you need Jesus Christ to do it. You Come won't on. be able to do it on your own. On your own. So when someone asks, who am I and how do I know what do I do? It is the most biggest thing in your mind that you're like, I can't do that. I cannot do that. And I'm telling you right now, yes, you yes, can. You can. you can't Come do on. it. Alone. You're going to need God to do it. So if it's a business, you need God for that. If yes. it's a book, if God is telling you, listen, you're about to be a New York seller, best author, write that book. Write it. Because Come when on. God is behind it, it will prosper. And that yes. is your identity. Anything that God says about you and that you can do, he will make sure that it prospers. He will send the people that are going to open those doors for you. He will speak yes. your name into rooms. He will make sure that you prosper. Come so, on. The Real yeah. Talk. Listen, <laughs> I know y'all better. Y'all, might, you know what? I'm going to give you guys an a pass for not writing that last piece down because you were probably somewhere shouting. And I understand because if I wasn't hosting this <laughs> podcast, I'd have been doing the same thing. I almost muted myself and did just that. But you know, here we go. <laughs> Woman of God, you are such a blessing. Listen, powerful truths being laid out right there. Understand who you are and know that who you are And the assignment, the thing that God has created you to do is going to be greater than your ability. You have to have him in order to accomplish that and more. Amen. He's he's empowered us to do it. His word said that, that, you know, greater works shall we do than what he did. And we'll get to that place by understanding who we are in him so that we can begin to do the greater works. The, my, um, my former pastor, uh, Apostle Geo Grace, as a baby Christian, he taught on a, a course. And that I could say that was one of the finding moments in my life. And you've been talking about that the, these last few minutes. He taught it on a course and he called it the process of change. And I teach it myself now. It's called Think, Say, Do. Mm. What we think is what we say. What we say is what we do. And what we do determines who we are. Nothing that we do can be above or without our mindset. And as the woman of God was talking, she said something about having the right mindset. We have to allow ourselves to be led of God. We have to allow ourselves to be led of God. In order to do that, you've got to completely change the way that you think. Because what we think is what we say. And what we say is what we do. And what we do determines who we are. And when we are led of him, we'll begin to be confident in his word and we'll speak according to his word. We won't call ourselves grasshoppers when he created us to be giant slayers. We'll be like Joshua and Caleb and be like, you know, I love Caleb. Caleb said I wanted my mountain 40 years ago. Give me my mountain now. (laughs) He understood who he was, even though they were the only two. That mm-hmm. understood, went over into the promised land, saw all those beautiful things. It's like, yeah, I want it. We can take it. We got right. this because God said it. Yeah. And everyone else not fully understanding who they were or the God that they served, what he was capable of, came back and gave a bad report and said that they were grasshoppers. Mm-hmm. Change the way that you think. Come in alignment with your identity in Christ. And the woman of God has given us some amazing tools to get us there. She's laid them out. Hit that rewind button. Go back. Take your notes. Submit them to the Lord in prayer and allow him to begin to change the way that you think so that you can change the way that you speak. And the way that you speak will cause you to become the person that God designed you to be the person that you most desire to be. You can accomplish the things you most desire to accomplish. There's no longer impossibilities, but everything becomes possibilities by knowing who you are simply by knowing who you are. This woman of God, 
I know our time is coming to a close. Like I'm this close to being over my time, y'all. Oh, <laughs> I'm this close to being over my time. But we will be back again. I promise you. I'm not going to promise you when. We're going to work it out on our calendars. But we're going to have to have a part two, woman of God. Find that space in your calendar and let me know. And we can do it live because this is the type of conversation I think that we need some live audience engagement on. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. We're going to take this live. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, before we go, you know, you've shared so much with us already, but please make sure before you go, let the Toolbox audience know how to connect with you and uh, and also anything that you have coming up with that they can be a part of um, and where they can find you. OK, perfect. Yes, you can reach me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is I am dot Lisa Marie Morton. Right. Um, and then also that's the same name on Facebook, same name on TikTok. So if you find me on social media, it's just I am dot lisa marie morton also my website is a wonderful resource to connect with me find me see what i have going on and that's just lisa marie morton.com um you you'll find on there my uh life coaching services mentorship services and just you know all of my services that i offer to uh help you guys out i would love to connect with you uh, in any way that you guys find me, I'm happy. <laughs> so if it's on Instagram, DM me. If it's on my website, send me a message. I'm just happy to connect. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. You guys, make sure you reach out and connect. She has some amazing content on Instagram. So if you have not followed her, make sure you get to Instagram get to her profile, hit that follow button. And she is dropping gems daily on there that will bless your very life, your, your personal and your professional life. You don't want to miss those gems. And again, you guys, if this is your first time following us and uh, tuning in, hit those like share and subscribe buttons on your favorite podcast listening platform. Leave us a rating, a star rating and a review. I want to hear from you. I want to know what you like, but I especially want to know what you didn't like, because how can I improve if I don't know what you want me to improve? Until next time, I am your host, Laquita Monley. You guys be blessed and have an amazing rest of your day. Take care.